have been saving these Amazon packages or the bubble envelopes for a while, thinking I would use them in the future, and haven't really done anything with them. So I thought that this would be a good time to get started and create something with one of those bubble envelopes. My name is Peg, and I call my channel 2 O Crows Mix Media. I hope you will take a moment and subscribe to my channel, and of course that notification bell lets you know when I upload additional content. My fortune from Takeout said it was a good day to start a new test, so what better time than to try something that, that I haven't done before. So let's get this bubble envelope out, trim it up, and create a nice book fold out of it. And I'm just trimming off that torn edge where I tore the packaging open. And there we have a nice book shape. And we'll utilize the bone folder here just to kind of press that into place. So there's our start. There's our substrate. And now to decide what, what to cover it with. And I'm a little weary of pasting or gluing paper down on top of this. So I'm going to utilize deli sheets. <clears throat> this is a fabric I received in a happy mail from Kathy. Thank you very much. She saw this fabric with the two old crows on it and thought that I would appreciate it and sent me a couple of yards of this fabric and I haven't used it as yet. I've been waiting to for just the right project and I think this will be a good little focal point on the front of this book. I'm going to tear that and kind of fray the edges and use those threads to create a little nest down in between the two right there. So we'll set that aside and we'll get back to that. And now to create the color on the paper, I'm just going to pull some prints on this deli sheet. And what I have done is I've started with a cold gray, created a little bit of mark making on the gray. I'm utilizing this rug. Um, what what they, whatever they call that that rug that keeps rugs from slipping and sliding and I have created some marks with that and I have let that dry to the touch and now I'm going to pull that color with the black on the deli sheet we'll get the remnants of the color or the ghost print as well and I'm just going to do that over and over until I have enough deli sheets to cover and collage this entire Amazon envelope. Just use two colors, cold gray and black. And now to just darken up or cover up the barcodes, the Amazon logo, and just kind of break up that manila color, I am utilizing the Mars black just bringing that color over front and back of this envelope. And there you can see I have a, a pretty good um, coat of black down. Now I'm pulling the dried deli sheets and I'm just collaging this entire envelope front and back with the deli sheets that we pulled the cold gray and Mars black color. And I've just torn those into pieces and I'm utilizing my glue and water mixture, the homemade Mod Podge, if you will, and I'll link that recipe up above. And I'm just gonna glue that down front and back. Now I do decide to overlap a bit on the side so I can fold that over on the back. And we'll just trim where we need to trim. And then where we have enough to fold over, we'll just fold it over. And that gives us a good start for the other side. I'm going to glue that envelope shut and glue down my piece of fabric. And that's that's about where that fabric, I'm not going to glue it down yet, but that's 
that's where the fabric goes. And now this catch paper that I've had, I'm going to tear that up. And I'm going to use that as a start for the signature that I put on the inside of this book. And that's that piece of packing paper that I just laid down on my sheet. It is what I clean my brayer off during the gel press coloring of those deli sheets. Now I'm just going to kind of glue this back together and create the outside of the signature that I'm going to be putting inside my book. I'm going to dry that up a little bit with my heat gun. And I'm just kind of collaging it with bits and pieces of that of that catch paper that we had laid down on the workbench. Just dry that up a bit with the heat gun. And there we go. We'll set that aside. We'll glue this shut. And I'm just where I've glued that shut. I'm going to add some additional deli sheets and fold those over so we don't have that opening and the edges are, are firm. And now I have decided to sew on the piece of fabric. And I've laid another um, little piece of uh, just plain off-white fabric behind it to frame it and frayed the edges of that. And I'm just going to slow stitch this on. We'll go ahead and fray up those edges a bit more. And we're starting to come together. There's that catch paper to make that first, that signature cover on the inside. We have our two old crows sewn onto the front of the book. And I also glued a little piece of uh, thread there in between, like one crow is handing the other that drop of thread and I'm just going to secure that in place with a little stitch. And tie that off. So there's our little dangling threads in between the two okros. Gives us just a little more texture. We have the nest that we glued down in between them with a bunch of, of threads. The catch paper signature cover that we used to clean the brayer when we were putting the deli sheets on. And now I'm just coming back with my gel press again and I'm going to create a bunch of pages to use as my signature. Coat of black, the stencil, we'll set that aside. That will be one of our pages. I'm using black and white to create these pages. And I have that piece of paper that my granddaughter had colored on, so we'll use that as our background for one of the pages as well. She will become a memory or a part of the book, part of the decoration of the book. We'll 
Then we'll pull the ghost print with a little bit of the iridescent white. And I'm just going to continue to play with black and white ink, some stencils on the gel press to create the pages for the signature of this book. And I'm going to cover 10, 10 sheets. And now I kind of went to um, introduce a second stencil. I'm going to use this stained glass stencil. And now the ghost print off of that. We'll pull that with some iridescent white. And I'm going front and back on all of these pages. I have something on my brayer there, so I'm going to clean that. Sometimes I just pick up globs of paint. And I'm kind of going around the outside edge. I'm, I'm going to use these sheets in totality, so I'm not going to trim them down to the size of the gel press print. So I want to come back and add some color to the edges of these pages as well, and we'll do that. But we'll get all of the prints pulled, and then, then we'll come back and add some color to those edges. So we're starting to get some nice sheets pulled together here. Let's kind of see what we have. And now let's get these together and we will kind of add some color to the edges of those pages. And I've just laid some black down, put a stencil over the top of it, and I'm just framing, framing these gel press prints by pushing the paper down just on the area where I want the ink to pull. And we'll do that on all of the sheets. And that will finish up that first, first layer for the signature. Okay, and now I'm just going to fold these. I'm going to fold one um, on the long edge and one on the short edge. And we'll go back and forth with those to kind of create a random signature. And there. Let's put it inside our catch paper and I think that we have the start of a nice a nice signature for this book. There are all those just black and white gel press prints. There we go. And now I'm going to pull out some old gel press projects and just add some color to each of these prints. And just go page by page and tear and collage right on to our black. So we'll just, this has been a gel press month for me. And I'm just going to pull out some of the previous projects that I've worked on. 
and include those into the signature of this book by tearing them into smaller pieces and adhering them to that black and white signature. And we'll just do that page by page. And some of these, you can see the gel press series. I'll put the playlist up above. And there's just all different types of things that I've done here. Magazine, polls, um, different mark making, etc. Okay, and that is complete. We'll go back over the inside of that book and cover up those stitches on the back side with an, another piece of that deli paper. And we have that signature together. I'm going to add in some of my homemade paper, some of the paper that I made. And I will link that video up above where I made this paper. I'm just going to add a little bit of interest with that homemade paper in here. And that slight little rip, I have some homemade washi tape that I'm just going to stick there to kind of hold that piece of paper together. And that pretty much will put this signature completely together. So I think that makes a, a nice signature for the inside of this. can go back and add some quotes or illustrate a little bit more on each of these pages, but it kind of shows the gel press progression in my gel press series. And I think it fits nicely within this Amazon packaging cover. I'm just going to clip that down and we'll bind this in. I'm going to measure to hit the center. I'm going to take my craft pick and go ahead and poke my hole completely through. I'm going to measure this waxed thread three times the length of my book and pull that through that first hole. I went to pull in some buttons and thread some buttons and beads on the outside of this cover. So as I'm binding, each time I come to the outside, I'm threading that wax cord with both buttons and beads. At the end, when we have this dangle, or the leftover threads when we tie off in the center, I'm going to tie a few buttons to that as well. And that completes that binding. I'm not going to go into the binding a lot at this video. There are other videos for that. I'll link one up above on how to bind. And now I'm just flipping through the book and covering any spot where I think there might be some weakness with some of that homemade washi tape. And that pretty much finishes this book with the exception of a closure. So I would like to have something that holds this book closed because you can see it just kind of falls open without the closure or without something to tie it down. So I have these little um, thumb type holds. I'm not exactly sure what they're called from Tim Holtz and they just screw into the book. I'm not grabbing those. Now that's what you see on the left hand side, bottom left of the screen are those little Tim Holtz closures. 
So I'm just pulling those out and I'll just screw it. You can see how it just screws into the book. So I'm showing you that closure and I'll just screw it in right here in the center of the front. And I'm just going to mark the spot and put a hole on the back page. The front has that little thumb hole. And I'm going to add a grommet to that to kind of keep that sturdy. And I'll just poke the grommet through the hole and then clamp it down with the crop dial. Get it positioned in place. And press. And there's the grommet. I'm going to thread this ribbon through the button and use that button as as my stop to hold this ribbon in place through that uh, grommeted hole. I'm just using my craft pick to get that through the holes of the button. And that comes through nicely. And then I'll stick that through the hole and then we'll tie that off. I just want to measure it to see how much I need to pull out to keep this book closed. And there's a real easy little closure to keep the book closed. And that completes this project. So this is a book made from the Amazon packaging you see here. You can see the the spine in this cover with the beads and the button buttons and we've just inserted gel press papers and use that fabric as our focal point so that completes the amazon packaging book i hope that you will make one of these and share with me what you come up with. I chose to cover it with the deli paper because I felt like that would have a lot of give to it. And I just used two colors, the cold gray and black. So thank you for stopping by and watching my videos. I appreciate those of you that have subscribed and always enjoy the comments. The thumbs up also helps my channel, so I do appreciate those. Once again, my name is Peg, and bye for now.